Welcome to Software Engineering. Today we're going to talk about project management. Project management can be defined as the process of planning and controlling the development of a system within a specified time frame at a minimum cost and with the right functionality. There are five steps in the project management workflow identified in the unified process. The first step is to identify a project. It can be creating a new system from scratch or making significant overhauls to an existing system or even making minor modifications to an existing system. Ultimately, we need to identify a project. The second step is to conduct a feasibility analysis to get a more detailed picture of the advantages and the obstacles of the proposed system. The third step in the process is to estimate functionality. And this involves identifying the different tasks that will be necessary. The fourth step in the process is to staff the project. That's where the manager plans for the actual work by creating work plans and estimating the effort, staffing the project, and coordinating the activity. And the fifth step in the process to identify the tools and the standards and the processes that should be in place for the system. This video is going to focus on step number one, identifying the project. A project is identified when a brand new client comes through the door and says they would like a development team to create a new software system for them, or within a, when a manager within a company identifies some kind of business need or a problem that the business is having that software would be a solution to. The document that comes out of a project identification is called a system request and it contains five elements. The identification of a project sponsor, um, the business needs, the business requirements, the business values, and finally any special issues or constraints. So let's take a closer look at these. So the first step in identifying a project is to identify a need. Um, it can be a client who comes to the development team with a proposed software system to alleviate some of the problems they're having in their business, or it can be your boss that comes to you and says, we're having a problem and I think we need a solution for it. Maybe they're saying, I would like to expand into technology of a mobile app, or maybe we need to increase our um, online presence with a website. It can also be to alleviate pressure or pain within the company, um, implementing things that might um, improve employee morale or reduce employee turnover or improve customer satisfaction. So identifying a business need means finding things within inside or outside of our company that we can improve upon, things that we can do better, improve efficiency or take advantage of new technology. So the business needs can be a bulleted list or a couple of paragraphs that are describing the reason why we need a new system or we need to overhaul an existing system. Once we have identified a business need, then we need to find somebody within our company who would like to see this project done. The project sponsor can be the client that has come to us from outside asking us to overhaul an existing system or develop a system for them, or it can be somebody within the company who would be a advocate to support this system as it goes forward, somebody who would really like to see it done. The project sponsor can either be one person or a group of people, generally somebody high up but within the organization who has a little bit of pull and a little bit of say about the things that go on. Depending upon the size of the project um, would be the number of people that you would want as a project sponsor. If it's a small project, maybe you just need one person in management. If it's a large project, you might want most of your management team to be a part of this. Um, the project sponsor needs to be excited about the project because they will have some level of day-to-day -day contact as the system is moving forward. Once we've identified the business need, the reasons why we need to create some software, and we have chosen a project sponsor who will support the system, the next thing is to decide what it should be doing. The business requirements section allows us to identify all of the capability of the system, the functionality that we need to implement in order to meet the needs that we have already identified. Imagine for just a moment going into Best Buy and picking up a box of software, turning it over, and there is a bulleted list of things that the software will do. 
That's what we're going to put in the business requirements section. We're going to identify at a reasonably high level the things that we would like this software to do in order to meet those needs. Once we have identified the functionality of the proposed system, the next thing that we need to do is to decide what kind of value it adds to the company or to the client who's proposing the system. And this part of the system request is very important because um, there can be a lot of need and there can be some well-executed functionality, but if it doesn't add any value to the company, then the powers that be, the management may decide that they don't want to invest in it. So the business value section is where we are going to identify what kind of benefits it is going to give to the company. And we're actually going to break these business values down into two different types of values. One is called tangible and the other is called intangible. So tangible benefits are those values that are measurable that we can quantify. I can say it would benefit our company to have a 10% increase in sales or a 20% reduction in operating costs that we would have 45% more traffic if we overhauled our website or that we would have a 10% reduction in turnover. All of these are measurable values, measurable benefits to the company. Intangible benefits, on the other hand, are not so easy to measure. They are not so easy to quantify. I can say that we would have improved customer satisfaction, improved customer morale, better vendor relations. All of these things are very difficult to measure, but they do add value to the company. And so it's important that we try to quantify those intangible benefits as well because ultimately we are going to try to put monetary value on all of these. For every $10 that we spend getting a customer, we spend $1 keeping that customer. So there is a great deal of value in improved customer relations and improved customer satisfaction and having repeat customers for life. And being able to quantify that out over the lifetime of a customer can be difficult to do, it just takes practice and experience to get good at being able to quantify um, both tangible and intangible benefits. The final section of the system request are the special issues or constraints. These are things that should, should be considered or might be relevant to the stakeholders or to the outcome of the system. Things that need to be taken into consideration as you decide on the implementation. It can also be a catch-all for other information that needs to be contained in the system request, but maybe it doesn't fit under the other categories. So here's an example of a system request with all of the necessary components. It is laying out the reasons why the proposed system should be built, what kind of features and functionalities it should contain, what kind of value it is going to add to the, to the customer or to the company, and then finally, any kind of issues and concerns that need to be considered as we move forward with this. Once the system request is completed, it would be given to either the client or the approval committee for their review and they can decide whether or not the business values outweigh the time and the requirements to complete it and whether or not it adequately meets the needs and they're going to give the up or down vote whether or not to continue. And if the choice is to continue, that doesn't mean that the system will be built yet. That means that the next step in the process will be completed and that is called a feasibility analysis and we will do that in the next video.